in the background by there. Thea's right, make everything happen. Um, people have been fringing. Everybody out there seen shows? Yeah. yeah. Doing it? Yeah? Yeah? I, any shows? Anything that anybody wants to show? Fish down, Queen of Fish down. Fish, Queen of Fish. I've seen that like in, tonight, tomorrow? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, yeah. Anyone else? Anybody the seen shows? Uh, the Tanner. Oh, I guess. It was phenomenal. It was great. Yeah. Huh? Phenomenal well, for Tanner. Five short drives. Excellent. Ah, uh, yeah, that's great. He's a great player. Right? Uh, yeah. Oh, kids, if you have to write. It's so sweet. Is it? I can't wait to it's see so that one. Okay. <laughs> of course, we are dropping, of course. Yeah. We are, yeah, there we go. I like how you guys work together on that pitch. <laughs> very, that's very well played out. There we go. That's very well. Well, are we great. Are our shows? Did I miss them? Well, you know, our other shows, but oh. if you, what are you doing, David? Who's afraid of David Lynch? Oh, yes, over at the... That was great. That was good. It was a lot of, yeah, yeah. Thank so you. that's it, right? I mean, this is how you find out. It's been three years since we've kind of had this environment. Uh, last year we had kind of hybrid version. We met here. Uh, my partner, Michael Blaha, and I. Baja in the back over there. We, uh, we met to do it here uh, with people performing from their homes, sending videotape, and actors here without an audience. Oh. And we realized the big missing thing, besides all of us being here, is like that conversation of what shows do you go see? What do you, where do I spend the money and time to see shows? So this idea is not actually a new idea. Uh, Michael, who is a producer from Edinburgh for the last 20 years, uh, kind of swiped this idea from Edinburgh, where they actually do, they have like two or three of these that perform every day, and they basically go out, they have a group of hundreds of judges, we have a group of 20, and we go out and see as many shows as we can, and we kind of select each week the best shows to give people a taster, to give an example. So you get to kind of see a little bit uh, get an idea out of all the 200 shows and keep in mind this 200 shows this is about half of a normal fringe mm -hmm. like Sandra when you were there 2018 2019 it was like 400 at least, at least. Yeah. so it, it's absolutely like it's smaller but bigger and this need of figuring out what to see what to see so we're really excited um, this year has been it seems like I don't know, two years of pandemicness um, has been really good for artists to kind of get things going and get things moving. So we, we had a lot of fun with our judges too, kind of figuring out uh, the shows for this year. And like I said, we're going to give each of you a chance to kind of get a little taste of it. Uh, most of these shows, I think all of them have tickets that are still available. Uh, so do, go see it. And, and the other thing that if you can walk away besides seeing these great shows, is to be aware of is this amazing guide. Yeah. Did everybody really see good. this? It's really, it's really good. good this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And really I good. was kind of like, I love technology. I'm kind of like, guys, I was actually saying no guys this year. I was like, digital, yeah. digital, let's just get a nap. But I fell in love with this guide. It's really easy to view stuff, the schedule, all that. Um, got a great map of fringe zone so you know where to go. Also, if you were to get one, so if you're asking, we got one in the lobby. See, I knew they're there. <laughs> it's also one of the things, too, if you don't know, oh, oh here it is fringe button. Okay, five dollars. And there's this whole slew of hot spots of places 15, 20 percent off of rest, like Village Idiot. Do you know Village Idiot? Yeah. So I expect 15 percent off. Wood and vine, 20 percent. I mean, pricey there. So wood and vine, 20%, but that makes it down to a little more like normal <laughs> prices. <laughs> so I think that's a great thing. So Fringe set that all up. So yeah, check out this. There's in the back, definitely check it out. But now enough about all me. <laughs> We're gonna see behind this door some of the best talent <laughs> of all of Hollywood Fringe 22. Are you there, talents? Yes. <laughs> they are. They are all ready. All right, talent. Well, it begins. <laughs> it's Christmas Eve, 2009, and Chris Chris Patrick from In Sync has a decision to make. <laughs> An original musical parody of A Christmas Carol and It's a Wonderful Life by Valen Shore and Allison Zada. Music direction by Taylor Williams, who did Moulin Rouge and Hamilton. Sound design by Josh Milliken of Six and the band's 
visit. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Kirkpatrick Miss, a boy band Christmas musical. <laughs> Joseph. Trouble? Well, sir, a lot of people are worried about a man named Chris Kirkpatrick. <laughs> ah, yes, Chris Kirkpatrick. This is his crucial night. We've got to send someone down immediately, ideally someone with boy band experience. <laughs> oh, that might be tough on such short notice. Actually, I already have an angel in mind. Who? Marky Mark. Ah, <laughs> uh, you mean Mark Wahlberg? Uh, isn't he alive and one of the highest paid top working actors today? Oh yes, Mark Wahlberg is alive, but Marky Mark is dead. <laughs> you see, Wahlberg had to give up that part of his identity long ago. <laughs> of course, I remember. Or uh, Are you sure he's gonna be Reliable? <laughs> I'm sure. I wouldn't put Chris Kirkpatrick in harm's way. After all, I spent a little more time on him. <laughs> <Did I>? <laughs> no. <laughs> I just really like that song. <laughs> but before Marky Mark could help Chris Kirkpatrick, he had a few things to work out for himself. <laughs> hey, Father. It's me, Maggie. <laughs> Get me back, Kay. I need to talk to you. I can't believe Chris said that stuff to me. I mean, who does he think he is, that little sh- No. No, you don't let him get to you, Maggie. You don't go down that road anymore, remember? Remember who you are. Let's go! These <laughs> feelings are working in my the dark, smooth, like baby skin, in every room I'm rapping in, classic, like Ellen John, if he could alley-oop like magic, but I'm a Celtics fan, and now I'm missing Boston, man. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie! 
I've been trying to get Chris to do the same thing. No, I gotta go find Chris. <laughs> That's it! Yeah. <laughs> All right! Yeah! Allison, get over here! Get over! And it's not over. Right. It's sad. It's sad. <laughs> what a show, right? I mean, this is the whole show. But I gotta tell you, I saw this like last week, and uh, it's over. You guys are at Studio Stage. Yeah, yes. And this, the amount of energy, fun. This is like everything when they say French show, like something that's just fun and unique. You couldn't see it anywhere. Who thinks about this kind of story? How did you, Alison, yeah, talk, talk to us about this? Uh, I am one of the co-writers of the musical. It started off as a joke. We thought it would be a weird, funny thing for someone to do. And then we kept thinking, if we were going to do that, though, we'd have to do this. And then if we were going to do that, we'd have to do that. And then eventually we were just writing it. So um, Valen can't be here tonight. She is the genius behind all of the music. Ah. Um, I, I do words. And we, we wrote the lyrics in the book together, but all the music is her. And also with our, uh, our music director, Taylor, um, and our sound designer, Josh, who are both New York Broadway people who, for some reason, wanted to do our show. <laughs> So all that music's original music from you guys doing it, yes. it's really it's great, but it le lent itself, I'm sure that was the attention of that period. Like yeah. the music and all that. Like oh, it yeah. was really, some of it I was like, all right, did they get copyright? <laughs> <laughs> because it's so, it was wonderful. Thank was you. Great. Yeah, great. actually Chris Kirkpatrick's manager <laughs> came to our first performance, oh, I wow. think, to maybe shut us down if we were ripping off. Yeah. But she loved it. She said it, we nailed it, and it was fantastic. So really? it was like a huge honor. What a great little story. <laughs> yeah. You know, another little fun fact there's another show called Crude mm -hmm. about Motley Crue. Yes. Oh, nice. And they actually did get a not, a, not shut down, but a changed title. Uh, uh, can't use this. Yeah. And there was a little bit of a you know, shuffle end. It's here for friends. Yes, yeah, we, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that's great. So, um, I, I, I know you guys already, like, it was tough for me to get a ticket. We um, actually ended up at, we, we sold out very quickly, yeah. um, but we did add one more show on Saturday the 25th at 11 p.m., and there are still seats available for that. They are selling again quickly, which is so <laughs> wonderful. Right. Um, but please, we'd love for everyone to come and see the show. We won't be able to do any, if, if were we offered an extension, we wouldn't be able to because some of our cast is on the East Coast. We have people in New York. Like Valentin, who plays Chris Kirkpatrick. Yes. And which is why she is Chris Patrick. She's Patrick. Yes. 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 But she's this, incredible. Is, this is the last. Like we won't be doing anything. Oh. We don't cringe for a little while at least. So if you want to see it soon, come come now. Are you guys doing a video of it? Oh, we we we're, were going to, but we are we're we're, we're not going to be live streaming it. Yeah. Can you get a video of it? We're getting an archival video. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. If like other venues wanted to put yeah. it up, we can. No, that's good. All right, no, definitely get it. We'll talk more. Cool. Um, so and Allison, too, did, uh, you guys, is this your first time doing this? Uh, yes. Your first show? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. Put, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sell us proud. Out of a pandemic. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, well, I just want to plug you though because I've been taking like webinars and these little individualized uh, attention classes with Matthew for the months leading up to the fringe, uh, which really, really, really put us in such a wonderful position. So I yeah, we had like nine days of rehearsal, but we somehow pulled it off. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Cool. No, but I, we offer a lot, but people, some people take it, some don't. You guys are class act all the way. Thank so you. please try to see this show. Congrats. Great show. All right. Such a French show. I love that French show. Well, our next act um, is a longtime French veteran. Uh, ben Morosky, I think, came into French first or second year. Uh, has performed uh, several award-winning shows, uh, mostly solo, uh, but wrote a wonderful two-hander called Tilt. Uh, with uh, Michael Shaw Fisher, another fin fin veteran that did very well. Um, it's been a couple of years, and uh, Ben is now back uh, with his new solo show called Dog. Beer, liquor, and football. The three things dog needs to get by. 
And right now, he needs a whole lot of each one. A searing dark comedy about a man coping with the death of his dog. Aww. From the award-winning creator of past Hollywood fringe hits The Wake and Tilt, Ben Morosky's The Dog. I searched the alumni tent, see if anyone's around, see if anyone came back this year. I got a few buddies, but everyone moved on, you know? Everyone, everyone moved on. Everyone started families. I don't get that. I don't, I mean, you can start a family and, 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 still, and still cut loose once in a while, you know? Still, still cut loose, still put on a jersey or not. Put on a t-shirt, throw on some school colors, anything. Sing the alma mater, buy a bag of popcorn from the kids selling it to raise money for their school projects. Be a good, fun, decent, fun, community-loving human being. It's a small town. Bring your family. Bring your family. God, am I asking too much? I'll teach them how to play cornhole. Giant Jenga. Ah, fuck. Time to break out the whiskey. I'm always trying to get the old alumni to do a shot with me. This is my favorite game. I wander the tailgate, my shades and jersey and mustache, smiling like a jack-o'-lantern. They know who I am. Hey, I'm coming for you next, offering shots to the oldest ones first. Most laugh me off, but a few always take me up and we shoot. Woo, that'll wake you up. Oh, nothing like an 8 a.m. shot. <laughs> I get a game of cornhole going. Losers take a shot, losers take a shot. You gotta take that shot. Half a shot then, how about that? I'll take it with you, I'll take it with you. I'll take the shot, I'll take the shot. Take one for the team, here we go. Woo, woo, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling, ah, that feeling when you drink, that right feeling, that feeling of knowing everything is right, you are right, the people around you are right, the fucking sun, the trees, this asphalt parking lot under my feet. Right, correct, the puzzle pieces all fit, they all, it all makes sense. All of it finally makes sense. Everything, even the bad stuff, even Brian, Diane, life, the turning of life, life and death, love and loss, the twisting of his hips, logic, logic, the illogical logic of all that is good and right and correct. Everything is easy because everything is everything and all things are one and I am the center and the center is a warm, bright, pulsating orb of light emanating from my solar plexus out to the universe. You could cry. You could cry it all feels so good. You could cry at all the sense that is being made. You are the tidal wave of emotion breaking over your own head like a shower of diamonds. You are the rightness swallowing up the wrongness. You are tailgating. <laughs> that is all. You are tailgating. <laughs> and here she comes, across the parking lot toward her little setup, old Judy's granddaughter. You're here, she nods. Cold, hands in her jacket pockets. Diane, what a surprise! My mom. Oh shit. Old Judy's granddaughter looks perplexed. It is Diane, isn't it? Mom, this is old Judy's granddaughter. Old who? From the bar down the. Never mind. Dawn. Huh? My name. Her name. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Her name. Who's Diane? My uh, ex-girlfriend. You broke up? Mom. Sounds fresh. Well, it wasn't like you. <laughs> it's just a little complicated still. Not like, I, I'm single. Do you want a four loco? <laughs> <laughs> she looks at me. A long look. To be fair, it's a shitty question to ask someone you just met who also just found out you just got out of a relationship. <laughs> Would you like to share a 12% alcohol malt beverage energy drink? <laughs> <laughs> Screw it. Sure. Now this, now this is something. You know they don't have caffeine in them anymore, she says. What? <laughs> they don't. I search the can. Then why the hell does it taste like shit? <laughs> she laughs. A laugh like an open road. <sighs> Clear road out of here. Clear sky. Sun high, 
everything on the horizon. Road out of here. You want to do a shot? She nods. I pour. We shoot. And wham. The curtain comes down hard. I black out. So Ben, I was saying in the beginning, you could probably give some specific numbers. This is your third fringe? Fourth. This is your fourth. When was your first? 2012. 2012. So second yeah. year of fringe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and which one was that? Wake was the second one. Uh, right? Vicious Minute. Vicious Minute first. was your first. Yeah. And you won the Spirit Award. I did. Um, okay. And then The Wake, which Sex with a Dead Woman. Yes. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that, you won that solo. I did. Right? Yeah. Ben in a chair. <laughs> and your sick imaginations. Not in that award. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And then uh, you you wrote the two hander, and and yeah. how did you how did you direct to how did you work till? Uh, Nick Masu, who directed Vicious Minute, The Wake, and he directed Till. Okay. Oh. So same director for those three. For those three, yeah. And Michael Shaw Fisher, yes, was the actor with you, which was a powerhouse, wonderful show. Yeah, thank you. Well, it was 2018? 2016, so I haven't been I mean, since. Six, wow, so six, six years. years. Yeah. Um, so you've been working, I see. Great, yeah. great piece, yeah, nice. Thanks. <laughs> um, how was it for you to come back after all those years, to fringe after six years and after the pandemic? How's this process been? Uh, it's been great. I mean, I didn't want to assume that I knew anything, so I tried to yeah. attend things that, that you oh, were doing yeah, and then yeah. just things in general with the fringe and uh, yeah just tried not to try not to assume I, I knew anything so I reinvented the wheel for myself yeah. <laughs> and, and that served you well you you're already sold out yeah we added one more show though oh, oh uh, wonderful all right well these people are definitely going to want to see it so why don't you let them know yeah we that. added a show on Thursday uh, the 23rd at 6 30 p.m. so there's still some tickets left so feel free to purchase them online yeah it's at the broad Water, Water Studio. Which is a wonderful, for those of you new to Fringe yeah. Zone, wonderful place. They have a bar, uh, bar there, great place to get a drink. Yeah. Um, so any anything about this show, I mean, it's, I don't want to go too much. You gave a, a wonderful taste of all of it, um, of why you chose this one now or came out. It's just kind of what you emerged from the pandemic with. Yeah, kind of. Um, yeah, a number of different things, but it's... Uh, it's fiction. My dog is not dead. <laughs> Yay, Yay. Yay. Yes. 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 He is in some of our advertisements. He's very much alive. Uh, <laughs> oh, your advertisement PR for these, you should say it's sharp. That's oh, the target. Man. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, come out and get yeah. those tickets for the 23rd. It'd be great to have you. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Okay, our next, Teaching a Robot to Love, is a heartwarming queer retelling of Frankenstein, kind of. <laughs> this sci-fi musical follows a group of hopeful interns in the tech city of Nanotropolis, looking for their big break and finding friendship, hedgehogs, mad science, and important lessons about change. Teaching a Robot to Love, the musical. fun if the program made a little noise every time that it had an idea. Ding! You should buy a Hawaiian shirt. Bing bong! Why not a trip to Iceland? Tra la la! You should buy the new Kesha album. <laughs> yes, Billy, those are some fantastic ideas. I'm so glad you're my teammate. Go put it on the dock. Now, Lavender, I appreciate the feedback, but that didn't feel entirely genuine. Look, I'm sorry, Billy. Those are amazing interface ideas, and you are fantastic at those, and that is why I'm glad we're on a team. Team friendship. 
<laughs> I'm just worried about the actual program here. Mr. Norton is essentially asking us to create the most intelligent AI ever made. Something that'll predict a human's desire by 100% accuracy. That's, it's hard. I see what you mean. In order for us to make this work, it has to be smarter than a computer and smarter than a human. I'm pretty sure that's illegal and dangerous. How can a sales AI be dangerous? Okay, well, if we can actually make the AI sentient, then it could actually start making its own decisions, and in turn could turn off its safety protocols. It could then take over the entire network. Okay, but who needs the internet, though? Am I right? The International Space Station. Oh. Hospitals. Oh. Stoplights. A sentient AI could potentially destroy the world. Okay, so we just build something that is not that. Exactly. We tell Mr. Norton it's impossible. No! No, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> he said it can be done. That means we can do it. He is the boss, and he's there for a reason. We already won. If we only stick to it, like wearing the right lipstick shade for your season, somewhere in these books, somewhere if we keep working, will be the right turn, the turn that we'll make. There's never been a call that I couldn't answer, and I'm gonna do it, whatever it takes. <laughs> Since I was a girl, I knew what was fated. My sister's a genius, but I'd have to grind. I'm faster, I'll always work harder to master any new talent that I can find. From straight A's to team sports, to reading of Gladwell, I've learned winning something you earn, you don't fake. This is my chance to be my own hero, and I'm gonna do it, whatever it takes. Winning is all that makes sense to me. Where I come from, people are a mystery. So content on being the same. Mother and father in the baseball game, living in peace with no fanfare. And if I don't get this job, I have to go back there. If I don't win now, my dream stops. Yeah, there are casualties on the way to the top. It's where this all fail. Those are my stakes. I don't have a moment left I can squander. I'm grabbing my future, whatever it takes. I'm grabbing my future, whatever it takes. <laughs> Tremendous piece. This musical has been buzzing up and down. <laughs> uh, and, and I tell you, that's, it's a longer show. It's about two hours, right? Yeah. Uh, but people are getting the ultimate. Sometimes people get nervous at the two hours. Uh, but this show is just, people are loving it. So congrats. Thank you so much. Everyone. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. It's the wind machine. Yeah. 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 We, yeah. We still have two shows left uh, on the 18th and the 21st. Yes. Unfortunately, or fortunately, we are sold out in person, but it's worth it to come to the stand-in line because sometimes people don't show up, so you can definitely check it out there. We also have a great live stream uh, of yeah. ah, performance, too. Excellent. It's a three-camera setup, and the, the sound is really good. Yeah. yeah. What space are you in? We're the Broadwater Box. Ah, uh, but I love that space. Yeah. And they really do. They have the nice, like, cool video. We learned a lot from streaming last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was tough. 
It was tough. Yeah, they well, gave them the really, full script yeah. and they switched they between. They kind of play it. That's great. So yeah. it's wonderful for people to get an opportunity uh, to go out and see it and hopefully okay, best of Broadwater, maybe an encore with all I hope that. So. I hope so. How um, where did this musical come from? What? <laughs> uh, this is a story about um, a few things. It's a, it's. I mean, it's a sci-fi Frankenstein story, but it's about mm -hmm. having a brain that doesn't feel like everybody else's brain, and it's also mm -hmm. very much my story of coming out as trans and the people who helped me along the way and the people who didn't help me along the way. <laughs> yes. um, and yes. uh, feeling like sometimes you want to be a brain in the box and in this musical the robot wants the opposite, which is very therapeutic for me. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice way to work out. And like, yeah. like you said, with a great team. Oh, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Co uh, costumers from New York, this cast yeah. is incredible. Yeah. Our producer Morgan has done so freaking it's all about the team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It really is. Well, it's yeah. wonderful to see such big musicals back this yeah. year, too. If you're a fan of the music, it's available anywhere you can buy music. iTunes, yeah. Spotify, yeah. Bandcamp. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Because it, it was the pandemic when it came out, we charted on the Broadway cast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is awesome. Wow. Well, you guys, you get a chance to check this out. If not in person, live streaming for sure. So give it up for teaching a robot to love. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think I'm right. I think I'm right. Well, that was fun. Kind of switching around from big musicals to solo shows. Woo! Toughest man in Chicago. Yeah. Cantankerous Chicago columnist Mike Reichel just may be the toughest man in Chicago as he takes on corporate greed, mobsters, celebrities, racism, and the mayor of Chicago. In this multimedia solo show, Tour de Force by Hollywood Fringe veteran Mitchell Bishop, the toughest man in Chicago. Nice intro, Matt. Uh, Mike Royko, uh, Chicago columnist, as Matt pointed out. My function is to explain things rather than report them. When you handle the news in a straightforward way, try to deal with facts, very often there are things in the cracks that aren't in the story. Subtleties, background. <clears throat> Sometimes it takes more than just a straightaway presentation of the facts if people are going to understand what it's all about. That's what some columnists try to do. You know, facts don't always come together to form the truth. What facts are, are facts. What a columnist tries to do is take these facts and put them into a perspective and give an opinion <clears throat> that may, uh, <clears throat> hopefully a, an enlightened opinion, an educated opinion, that can give the reader a better understanding of what the story is all about. There once was a lady who owned a tailoring and dry cleaning store in California Avenue. In a good year, she'd make $2,000 after paying her rent. In the window were artificial flowers that the lady made by hand and sold for a buck or two for a large bunch. There was a rack of clothes that were for sale. The sign said unclaimed, but in truth she bought abused at the Salvation Army outlet store. Her customers knew this, but the subterfuge gave a little dignity to buying used clothes. The store hours were 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., but that didn't mean anything. If somebody needed their clothes at 8 o'clock on a Saturday night, they'd just rap on the door and she'd open the place. The lady didn't do her own cleaning. Clothes were sent to a large plant and sent back in a few days. There was no one-day service or eight-hour service. And the cost of a garment probably ran a nickel or dime higher than in the bigger places. Her tailoring work was expert. Besides rip, mending rips and cigarette burns, the lady would make a communion dress or graduation suit. At times, the shabby store was so crowded it appeared prosperous. The old ladies and old men found it a nice place to sit and talk. The lady provided chairs and coffee, and if somebody would walk a block to buy a quart of beer, she'd provide the glasses. When the lady's grown-up children would visit her. They'd often find her sewing late into the night and ask her what the heck she was working on at that hour. Her explanation was usually that Mrs. So-and-so needed a dress by tomorrow. 
for her daughter's wedding or a funeral or a graduation. It was very important that it be done. When the children asked why the heck she didn't sell the place for the little it was worth and come live with one of them, her lips would tighten. They didn't seem to understand. This was her business. She supported herself and it was an important part of the community. But the people of the neighborhood, the children would argue, those who hung around the store were nothing but characters, outright freaks. She'd laugh, agree, and say they were far more interesting than the dull friends her children had. <laughs> Once or twice a week after the store closed, she'd walk a few doors down to the tavern. It was a friendly place where the customers were seldom rowdy. People knew each other by their first names. She didn't know it. But for the price of a highball, that lady got what some people spend thousands of dollars for at private country clubs. The cleaning shop is gone now. In its place is a hamburger joint where teenagers gather to listen to the jukebox. The people who took their clothes are now taking them to another place. It's opened up nearby. It's big and has lots of glass and plastic trim. The cleaning is done right there. You can get eight hour service or one day service. The man behind the counter presses a button and the rack moves automatically so you can get your clothes several seconds faster than the lady could get them for you thumbing through by hand. The price of a garment is a nickel or dime cheaper, which is the benefit of such efficiency. The man behind the counter asks your name, even though you've been there 50 or 100 times. Maybe he's the owner or the manager or clerk. You don't care what he is, and he doesn't care who or what you are. The new place didn't put the lady out of business. She died long before it opened. She kept her store open long after she found out she had cancer, long after it became painful. But if she hadn't died, they would have driven her out because they are efficient, modern, and cheaper. Their business is cleaning clothes, not gossiping and letting characters sit around drinking coffee and beer. She got away in time. Well, I was very excited for this piece. Not only have I known Mitchell for a few years, mm -hmm. um, you're kind of like uh, Ben too. This is your third year? Third year doing a show, yeah. Doing a show, excellent. Mm -hmm. You've had also, when was your first year? The first year was 2018. Okay. Yeah, and then 2019, I did one right afterwards, and then, and and then, then here we are. I am breaking it back. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't get enough. Can you make a difference? How do you like the difference between the uh, 2000? The, there are no pre-COVID years. Oh anything? yeah, totally. But uh, yeah, I think it's a different feeling too, just personally. You yeah. know, bringing yeah. a, sh a different kind of show than I normally yeah. bring. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, it's it feels differently. But yeah, it's been a few years since it's, I've been in the mix. So. Right, right. And first time up here with front people. Me too. It's kind of exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh, oh thanks, Brad. Yeah. Yeah. I need that, man. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. So I was really excited. I love histories. I'm a big fan. Um, and this is this story is especially dear for me because uh, my wife and I, Berta, we grew up in Chicago in the, the North Burbs. Yeah. Um, I was Barrington. Were you? I, I was at Wilmette. Wilmette, right? Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So you know, North Chicago Tribune. I loved all those comments and all that. <laughs> Uh, but Chicago's an amazing town, the hoods and all that, and it's just, he's an amazing historical character. Yeah, and, yeah, and he's somewhat forgotten, too, that's the other thing. Yeah, some of the events, I'm like, oh, wow, he commented on that yeah. and that thing. And what, what he did a great job with is carving out this history that's from a while ago and, and make seem to bring out relevance to today, mm -hmm. which is nice. So for those of you who don't necessarily like politics, and stuff. There's a lot of kind of information and thoughts about past and how it relates to now. Yeah. A lot of that thought was great. Um, you're still getting, you still have some shows coming up for us? Yeah, I have a show the 18th, uh, that's Saturday night, and it's uh, close to selling out, but it's a lot of Chicago people, so if you're from Chicago, that's the night to come. Uh, 
Um, and then at the 25th, which is a 3.30 show, and that's, uh, and it's great too. It's like, we're gonna be the same show, so. Uh, <laughs> it comes in great. Uh, <laughs> Chicago the first night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, Chicago, yeah. we've been talking about a few. your bear stuff, or your cup stuff. <laughs> yeah. No white socks. No white socks. Uh, <laughs> um, something that came up earlier, and I was gonna bring it up, but I knew you were gonna come on stage, is you had some of the, the celebrity of your show come see the show. You had the family of Royko came. Mike Royko died 25 years ago this year. And I did. I only was going to do five shows for the Fringe, so I didn't really contact anyone, not thinking that any it would ever get back to, you know, word would get to Chicago. And then about a month ago, I had uh, the niece of Mike Royko DM me saying, "Hey, we hear you're doing a show about my uncle," <laughs> and uh, she's been great. And I've talked to his son since then, and he's been great. And they they. They were on board before I even performed it for them. And it's and I never told them that it's also kind of a biography about him too. So it's not just a straight, like his columns. Um, and I was worried about that because, you know, he's, yeah. he's not, he's kind of a divisive character sometimes, yeah. but uh, they were on board. They saw it and they loved it, so. Yeah, well, you walked an interesting line with him now, but see, some things weren't politically correct yeah. back then when right. I was doing it. I try to be true to that, but also make it so it's good for an audience today to see. Too, yeah, you know? that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great job. So do, please, try to fix that down. Thank you, please. Help this man in the room. All right, moving along. Reconsider me. Reconsider me. A motley crew of actor friends gathered to bury or plant one of their own. Randy Starr was rising fast when he suddenly died of an undiagnosed heart condition. But hey, that's okay, isn't it? Reconsider Me is a funny and affecting play that asks what it means to live a considered life. Reconsider Me. Then you'd understand. No, I know, I get it. It's a path. Right, a path to your center and back out again. When you think of it that way, it's really quite beautiful. Don't you think, Jay? It's rocks. <laughs> it's rocks, yes, but it's what they're doing. If you had read the sign, never mind. It's way bigger than I expected. I mean, yeah, it was pretty. I can't believe I didn't know this place existed. Madeline is... she's something else. Madeline's amazing. Yes. What a lovely girl. I don't know what planet she's on right now. Honey. Come on, it's weird. It's like she knows something we don't. Maybe she really is at peace. Maybe, maybe she snapped. Oh. She's so accepting of everything. Did you know that she and Randy were open? What? what? Yeah. <laughs> she told me herself. Oh my god. Is that right, huh? Mm -hmm. Maybe she's not so crazy. What does that mean? <laughs> well, I mean... You want to be in an open relationship. No, of course not. I'm just saying that monogamy is... It's not always the best idea for everyone. The best for some people. Go on. <laughs> Hypothetically, I mean. You have to admit, it's not exactly natural. Uh, it's not natural. Jane, calm down. I'm talking about evolution, <laughs> physiology, and all that. He's kind of right. Oh, really? The spread of seed, you know, like nature <laughs> wants men to spread their seed. Yeah. Males, I mean, in all species. Well, and nature wants women to collect plenty of seed. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not as much, but yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, people cheat, right? Men and women. There has to be a reason for that. It's not like it's rare. Yeah, exactly, because it's taboo to be polyamorous, at least openly, for no particular reason. Right, so, so there's a stigma, so people think you have to be monogamous to be good people. Right, and so they pretend they are to fit in and sneak around instead when it doesn't have to be like that. Right. Right. Is that what you're doing? No, of course not. <laughs> Why, of course not. I mean, it's natural. Because we're not open. <laughs> well, also, monogamy <laughs> is an arrangement made for families. You're yeah, right. Uh, to make babies like you guys are, which makes sense. Exactly. We're, we're having the baby, honey. Don't call me honey, Jane. Be because <laughs> that's the best way. One man and one woman. Well, yeah, whatever. Two or something. That's what I meant. <laughs> and you want to have a baby. What do you mean? Of course I want to have a baby. We're having a baby. With me. 
One woman. Of course. I'm crazy excited. Because you don't have to, you know. What do you mean? I mean, I'm only eight weeks. Jane. Oh, goodness. I didn't mean to say that. Jane. Huh. No, I didn't. I didn't. I need to lay down before dinner. You two, get in another round and resume your dispassionate deconstruction of modern social norms. Oh, Jane, please don't go. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's not your fault, Dr. Weiss. Colette. Colette. It's not your fault. Don't worry about it. Chimps aren't monogamous, you know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Bonobos screw each other nonstop. It's like a... Handshake to them. I read that. But are we chimps? Some of us. Oh my goodness, Ryan Langley! You can call me Dr. Brad. <laughs> it's how people know me, and I like to live up to that. I mean, who is Ryan Langley? <laughs> who knows? Dr. Brad. I know who Dr. Brad is. Exactly. Hello, Dr. Weiss. <laughs> I'm Dr. Cameron. This is Dr. Jane. Friends of the deceased? Uh, no. Hired mourners, actually. <laughs> Would you excuse us, please? Ryan? Dr. Weiss, I don't think it's polite to get, get over here! Be right back, kiddos. <laughs> it's the show! <laughs> what the hell do you think you're doing? Paying my respects to Dr. Mitchell. Randy! It's Randy, you idiot! He was my co-star, too. I have a right to be here. You weren't uh -huh. invited. I was told it was open to everyone, just like Randy was. You're disgusting. Do you know that? Honey, can we just... Don't call me honey. I told you we're over! Dr. Weiss, <laughs> let's just enjoy ourselves and pay respect to our friend. Oh, please. He was not your friend. Rousa. Right? He's even better looking in person. <laughs> That's a dumb thing to say. Uh, Dr. Brad, I'm Madeline, Randy's person. I've heard so much about you. Oh? Well, a few things. <laughs> I had no idea you'd be coming. He isn't, he is not here. I wouldn't miss it. Dr. Mitchell was a fine man. He was oh. impressive bedside manner. Oh. Well, Randy would be thrilled you're here. Welcome. Do I know you? You look familiar. Have we worked together? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. Are you sure? Are you an actor? Uh, no, I'm a cook. Actually, he had a pretty big role on SVU. That's probably where you saw him. <laughs> no, it could be that. I don't watch that. <laughs> but it's something very familiar. Uh, I hope you're staying over tonight. Oh, yes, I'd love to. There's nowhere for you to sleep. Where are you sleeping? Uh, something will present itself. <laughs> well, I'm going to go get some air. Suddenly intolerable in here. <laughs> Join me, Jane? No, thanks. I'll go. Babe. Babe? No! Not babe! Colette! <laughs> Let's go, Cameron. Okay. I'm fine, Cameron. Stay! <laughs> uh, you don't care if we uh, keep Cameron, do you, Colette? <laughs> of course not. I'll see you all at dinner. Not you. <laughs> we'll see you all at dinner. Thanks for watching. <laughs> what a dick. Thank you. Wow. Super hot, though. Oh, no. wait, that question. No way. Not nearly as good looking in person. <laughs> he liked you, Kevin. What? He said you look familiar. People say that when they like you. It's a ploy. It's true. <laughs> no way. What? He can't like me? He's straight. Don't waste your time. My year tune has changed. Seriously? Uh, you have a fiance. I think he does like me. You're right, Cameron. I'm glad he can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Cameron. I'm getting another drink. Do you need another drink? Yes, Jane, I do need another one. I'll see you at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> You okay, sweetie? It's fine. All right. Reconsider me. Yes. Yeah. All right. Get back, get back. Get back in there. Get there. Come on. They got swept up in the drama. They did. The drama. So, um.
Where are you guys? Where's, where are you to perform this wonderful show? We are at the Davidson Valentini Theater, the cute little bo black box at the oh, LGBT oh, Center. LGBT keys. Oh, on, I love on, that on, space. On yes. Yeah, it's a really great little space. It's a great, and Matt Richter, greatest tech Correct. in history yes. of Hollywood. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our Texas oh, guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 the back. <laughs> And it's set up in the round right now, so it's really intimate, cool. Little space. Oh, what a yeah. cool! Yeah. Wow, yeah. excellent. Um, and tell a little bit about how this show came together. Sure. Uh, this is something that I started writing maybe three years ago. Uh, that I was planning on doing in Fringe in 2020, and had the space reserves and everything. And then we all know what happened in 2020. And um, uh, there was a, a bug going on. Yeah. <laughs> So when I found out that Fringe was coming back in person this year, I was like, oh, good. It's good, let's do it. So I finished it, because I had shelled it for a while. And yeah. then uh, contacted Matt and got this amazing cast together I'm so lucky to have. And uh, yeah. here we are. Yeah. Had you done Fringe before? I had done, I was in a Fringe show okay. in 2011, which I think was the first one. Wow, yeah. yeah, a second one, but by second the dawn. One. And then I've seen, I've been a patron for a bunch of shows, but oh, this is my first time producing Fringe. That's how it starts, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do a show, because this seems fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's I got stuff to do, a few rehearsals in May. Yeah, this exactly. is easy. Yeah. And then you do one, yeah. and then you're like, you meet someone, and you're like, hey, I got a show idea. <laughs> and that's really cool. You can be the lead. Wonderful. And then you can, and, and that's how it, and now you come back and you do this. Yeah, yeah, it's been a great experience. I'm yeah. happy to be part of the fringe energy. That's yeah. it. Great. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How was the rest of you guys? Before, have you done a... I'm a virgin. It's the first virgin, time. Yeah. Virgin, yeah. Very exciting. Virgin. Yeah. I, I did Fringe NYC 11 years ago. Wow, that's me. wonderful. You know, a little fun thing too here with this Fringe. Um, the encore, so along with this, when you folks are getting these nice little tidbits of shows, um, there's also the Fringe Encore series that follows the Fringe in July. Ooh. And there, all the venues pick top shows. So, like Pick of the Fringe, we're gonna the yeah. curators go out and find the top shows and pick. In addition, uh, Darren Lee Cole from Soho Playhouse in New York City comes out, and he also is scouting for shows. And he'll pick one or two shows to go to New York City to perform in the Fringe Encore series there. So there's very much a nice connection between Hollywood and New York City. Who knows what can kind of happen with all that? But in the meantime, catch the show, reconsider me. We have, th playing over we have three shows left. We have three one shows. This three. Sunday at three, and then the last week of, of Fringe, we have one Wednesday at eight, and closing night Saturday at six, I believe. And Saturday the 25th. Little postcards on the table. Yeah. Nice plug on that. Grab those postcards, <laughs> grab a guide, see this show. Thank you, folks, Thank for coming out here. Well, we're coming down. Um, we um, we had eight show. Eight Mike was it eight or nine today? We had eight, and uh, we had so, a group that had postponed. We had a few, not to make people nervous. In fact, this should make you feel pretty good. There have been a few COVID cases, and they've just postponed shows. You know, it's going to happen. Control it. So a few shows have been stopped, postponed, and the show continues on eventually down the line. So we had that show, we had to kind of wait, and if during the course of this final piece, um, this other show was running from a, a performance, because that's what Fringe is like, uh, we'll see that. Uh, but if not, you know, this will be it. But I, have you guys had a pretty good time so far? Right? What about Fringe? What a variety this year already, right? Well, we got one more. We got at least one more for you. The Ramon Show, Spiritual Cheerleading 101. <laughs> Imagine Mr. Rogers gone drag mixed with Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse gone Puerto Rican, <laughs> and you've got Ramon. Yeah. In this immersive experience, certified joy expert and comedy drag king Ramon interacts with the audience to fill them up with a dopamine, gratitude, and joy. A 2022 Fringe Scholarship winner the Ramon Show, Spiritual Cheerleading 101.
despondently on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. How about you? What's your favorite feeling? Love. Love! Oh, love, love. That's my favorite feeling. Oh, you know, in my show we do feelings that are simple and that are challenging. One feeling that's challenging is judgment. Jeff? <laughs> Who here has judged themselves this week? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we're going to work on judgment because we get so many messages, right? From the media, society, Instagram, telling us that we aren't enough. <laughs> but that's not true. They're trying to profit off you by making you feel like you're not enough. Yes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we have to take back our power and brainwash ourselves with positivity and grumpiness. <laughs> but we are enough, yeah? yeah. 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 Volunteers to come on stage for a little exercise. Me. Yeah, come on stage! <laughs> yes, yes. Awesome! You two are going to stand across from each other, okay? Tell us your name. Madeline. Madeline, give us Madeline! Thank you! Thank you. Oh, what's your name? Max. Max, give it for Max! <laughs> I know that you're voting for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Already a spiritual journey, and we haven't even started the exercise. <laughs> okay, this is how it's going to work. There's going to be 30 seconds on the clock in my head, okay? <laughs> I are going to back and forth, say a compliment about the oh, other nice. person. <laughs> and you're going to start the sentence with, you are. For example, you are a great audience. <laughs> Okay, and then you're going to say the compliment to the person. And audience, <laughs> if they get stuck, you know, holler for them, clap for them. And we also have examples of compliments. Okay, you have sparkly eyes. Your outfit really brings out your inner child. You have really great energy. You are a volcano of passion and creativity. Okay, so let that marinate your head. The world is your oyster. Okay, 30 seconds on the clock. Those three. They're complimenting. You're a really good actress. Oh, you are a very nice man. Oh, <laughs> you are doing well in your acting career and have great taste in material. Oh, this, you are very good at compliments. <laughs> I don't know if these are your clothes or a costume, but that's a wonderful cummerbund with the dramatic mask. <laughs> I did. That's true. That you you that. also have impeccable taste. Five more seconds. You have very toned arms. <laughs> <laughs> And you're going to get a prize. But before that, we have to do the second part of the game. Uh oh. <laughs> second part, for 30 seconds, back and forth, you have to compliment yourself. Hard oh. there, hard there, but that's how you get a prize. Okay? <laughs> I need examples about myself. Ramon, you a snappy dresser. <laughs> Okay, so now 30 seconds on the clock in my head, back and forth, we're going to start with you. Okay. And you are complimenting yourself. You can say, I am la la la. Okay? Uno, dos, tres, go. I am very brave. <laughs> I am smart for buying this shirt in six colors. <laughs> I enjoy going to things like this, the French Fest, and I'm glad that I keep going to them for years yes. and years. I am supportive. Yes, you are. Uh, I am able to appreciate great talent. Oh, yeah. I have a lot of energy. I started wearing jewelry in the second half of my 30s. Thank you. Yes. Oh my god, 
there's so much in here. I know, I, know. I didn't know how many times I More jewelry for you! Oh, 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 oh my god! There are so many yeah, These are a little bit intertwined right now. Yeah, we untwine them. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. Okay. I'll give this also, back John, I have a bigger treasure chest sent to the theater. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up, and we're going to do cheers for ourselves. Okay. <laughs> Everybody stand up. Yeah. You repeat after me. Ready? I love myself. I love, I love myself. myself. My body is a temple. My body is a temple. I matter because I am matter. <laughs> what you're spreading. Thank you. Oh, thank I feel that. Do you guys feel better? Yeah. <laughs> like, right? I'm glad we saved this at the end because I feel like there's just going to be this uplifting spirit oh, right. that we're all going to kind of leave this space with. That's what. So tell me, Ramon, have you done uh, Fringe before? First time. First time. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot of first time Fringers this year. Yeah. So it's really kind of, that's been, and what a great energy, right? Yes. Are you finding, you finding a lot of spiritual energy yes. that you're pushing yes. out there? Yeah, because we're all creating after a time where we were, you know, not right. allowed to create. Yeah. Talking in boxes. Talking in boxes. boxes. Hey, what's yeah. going on? Turn on your mic. Yeah. <laughs> The collective, yeah. right? We were yeah. locked in, and now isn't this? Is how great is this? So much better. This crowd, right? Yeah. Let's yeah. Clap for this crowd. All the performers. Let's bring all the performers yeah. on stage. Come on, you're all back there hiding. <laughs> the laser, I see you over yeah. there. Let's get every Mike of Blaha. Thank you, David. We got Christian Kirk Pass with his own level. Just level it. Got a picture, got all these pictures. We got and the longest applause in the world. Thank you. We do this at the end. You got applause. There we go. Fill it in the bottom. <laughs> 